Welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, today, I have the great pleasure to have with me here a big practitioner uh, from Italy. Uh, most of you will recognize his face when, when you see him. Uh, he's helping all of us uh, in the European atmosphere uh, to communicate ourselves, to make associations. So it's with a great pleasure that uh, I, uh, I share the, the chair, the, the coach, to, today with uh, Dr. Uh, Giovanni Battista uh, Guardagnini. Welcome, Giovanni Battista. Thank, Thank you, you very Ruben. much for, for being here. Thank you, Ruben. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. It's a very big pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's, it's very nice to have someone like you that represents all of us uh, here today. So I would like that you explain us a little bit uh, your curriculum, where do you do, what do you do? Because you are involved in many different associations in, in Europe. So exactly what do you do or in which associations are you yes. uh, representing us? Well, first of all, I'm a pig practitioner. So I'm, I'm a vet <clears throat> and I'm a swine practitioner. So I work uh, daily in the, in the swine farm. Uh, that is my, my really work. Then uh, I uh, try to do my best to help uh, the profession and to help the vets, uh, first of all, in Italy, uh, because I'm the vice president of the chamber, the order of the province of Brescia, and I'm involved also in the large animal group of the national uh, order that is uh, FNOVI, and I try to, to do my best for the, the profession. But um, some years ago, I have also the possibility to uh, enter in uh, European Association for Science Health Management, and uh, I'm, I'm still the president, uh, and I'm going to finish my mandate, but uh, it's, it's a very, it was a very nice uh, uh, experience because I had the possibility to uh, enter in also in the big family of uh, FVE. And uh, it's, it's very important to uh, try to connect the people, try to be present, and also the connection with UAVP and the FVE give me the possibility to uh, represent FVE as a swine practitioner in the, the, also in some group of the commission, the European Commission. And from my point of view, it's very important that uh, a practitioner can be there uh, as an expert because uh, we can bring there our experience and also the reality of the work. Because sometimes uh, in the palaces, yeah. discussion is <laughs> not really related, is not very related to uh, the daily work that we're life. doing. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. I, I, I like to be with, with my jacket, with my tie, but also with my boots. So yeah. I, I feel very comfortable with the boots and sometimes to, to bring the boots also in the palaces. So, so now that you speak about boots, I know that you are also a peak practitioner. Can you tell us a little bit about your daily work uh, as a peak practitioner in, in Italy? I, it's 15 years that uh, I'm, I'm working as a peak practitioner. And when I started, I thought that I need to work more with, with farmers. So I thought that a lot of vets were working on health. And so maybe I can also work with health, uh, but I try to focus my work on production and helping the farmers to manage the farm. So I'm now visiting every client every week or every two weeks and only few farms, uh, one times per mouse. So the most of the farms are visited very often. And there I can, first of all, look the animals uh, to, to try to understand what's happening, both in health, but also in production. And um, my work is to collect data, to analyze data for the production, but also to help the workers to do their job, try to motivate them, try to find a way to solve the problem also for the stockman, but also for the, uh, for the farmer. Sometimes the farmer is full of work uh, with uh, the buying uh, feed, selling pigs, uh, uh, bureaucracy, and bank to find credits, and so on. So he, he, the time to go into the farm is less, less, less. So That's they right. need someone that can understand what is happening and try to guide the, the, the workers. And I like so much to stay into the farm to try to motivate them. Sometimes they are not really um, people that have a, a lot of knowledge. Someone is new, so they need also to be trained. And it's very nice to stay into the farm and try to, to, to help them. And then also to analyze the data and see that uh, with your work, we are producing more and more. Yeah. So I like very much. 
I have also to, to work on the health of the animals, so I also work with the prescription of the drugs and on the prophylaxis, decided the vaccine plan and so on. But that is more common for a vet. Yeah. And the part that is less common is the involvement of the, the, the vets in, uh, in the management of, of the farm. And I choose also to work for the farmer. So tell, okay, I'm not working for a company. I have my own practice that is my company. And this relationship directly with the farmer is, is very helpful because uh, you are working for, hi, for him or her, for the farmer, and this can create a relationship that you are working together, you are a team, and together you want to, to, to reach the target. So it's quite interesting what you mentioned, and maybe we will discuss a little bit later about communication that you you like <coughs> to have. Uh, you have nowadays we have a lot of data in the farms. You like to process all this data to produce information, and with this information to make decisions to improve the efficiency of, of the farms. But um, a key point, and you mentioned already, is also the communication with the um, uh, with the farmer and to. Uh, convince the farmer in a kind of indirect communication to take an action over someone else. It's, if we compare with, uh, with humans, when you go to the doctor, you, the doctor advises you to do something and you do because it's for you. But in, in swine medicine, the role of the veterinarian is just to convince the farmer to take an action over a third party, over the animals, over all patients. So I think this indirect communication is, is very important and you already mentioned that. It's very important, but it's also very difficult because um, uh, we are not uh, uh, speaking about your health, but we are speaking about the health of the pigs, uh, but it's more related to your money and what and your income. So uh, very difficult is to explain to the farmers that they need to do something that maybe is expensive, but they can have a, a return on investment in a few years and in a few months. So this is a very difficult topic. And this is why I choose to work for the farmer. So I'm working for you, that you are my chief, my, and I'm trying to do the best thing for you and for your farm. And this is a key point because um, if you are not working directly for the farmer, he can think that you are not doing the best for him, but the best for your company. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, a secret of the relationship that is with the farmer. And from my point of view, it's very important because sometimes uh, the owner is doing the, not the best thing, but because he thinks is the best, but is, is not the best. I'm, I'm out of the business, so I yeah. can take the decision, not with feelings, but with data and yeah. with thoughts, with uh, my point of view, that sometimes is not very nice for the farmer. Okay, you are not doing the, the best for your farmer. And it, at the beginning, it's, it's not very happy to, to, to listen to this, but when they understand that you are doing your best for the best of the farm and for the best of the income of the farms, they can realize that you are uh, important for the farm. So this is the key point, but it's very difficult, the communication. We were speaking about the communication. It's, it's not very easy because no one teach us how yeah. to speak with the farmer. There are a lot of courses about speaking, but it's more related to sell something. I'm, I'm not selling, I'm selling knowledge, I'm selling feelings, but it's not really a selling, it's to work together. Yeah. And it's something different. And this need always the truth, and this need to have a real relationship that I need to tell you the truth, also if you don't like it. Yeah, so it's a kind of business relation and a personal relation. So in the business relation, you need a win-to-win. So both companies, the farm and your practice survived, but also you need this personal uh, relation to, uh, to establish a good communication channel to, to convince in some way the, the, the farmer to take the best uh, decision. Yes, it is. And it, it needs to be win-win, but uh, uh, the personal relationship is so important because they have to accept that uh, they can do something different uh, to, to, to reach new targets and to have uh, new results. So uh, you need also to, um, to have personal feelings, to have uh, the, the farmer that believes in you and he thinks that you are the right um, uh, answer to his uh, thoughts. And 
maybe it's the same that uh, the doctor for the patient, because when you go to the doctor, uh, you need to do what he is suggesting you for your health. This is not uh, the same, but the, the, the feelings of the pharma need to be the same. You are the answer to his problem. And in this way, in the years uh, working together every week, uh, you are also establishing a personal relationship that it's not easy to manage in, in, some, in some moments, uh, especially when the things are not going in the right way. Uh, but it's very important that they believe in you. Yeah, I would like to keep going a little bit, uh, digging in this uh, personal relationship. Uh, so I know that um, Italy, the same as in Spain, we are considered a kind of warm blood countries that we are more uh, quite emotional or we uh, react in, in another way compared with uh, northern uh, countries in, in Europe. Um, so I would like what is you, to know what is your opinion on, on these personal relations uh, with uh, the farmers, with your clients, and how the veterinary profession is uh, taking in, in your country, if, uh, if there is respect for this professional, uh, for this veterinary profession in, in Italy. Well, uh, it's difficult to, to tell if from the profession to all the vets, but I think you have to uh, demonstrate to the farmer that uh, uh, he can believe in you. So it's a, a daily work and it's not very easy and they don't believe in all the vets uh, the first time. So uh, when I go to a new a client, I ask uh, for a, a contract of one year and tell him, okay, we don't know each other. Um, I know that uh, I have to do a work and sometimes it will be difficult for you to change your behavior in your farm. So in this case, we need one year to, to know each other and to try to work together. But in this year, you need to um, listen to me and try to do my um, what I suggest to you because we need to um, build the trust to each other. Um, I think a lot of farmers believe in their vets. Uh, maybe the society don't think that the vets are so important because they don't know what the vets do. So sometimes you are just uh, the people that treat the dog and they can, cannot understand that you are behind all the, the food and behind the welfare, so they just uh, look uh, oh, look, in that uh, farm, uh, they are not uh, having care of the animals in the right way. And you, they don't know how much work there is behind. And every farm we visit, we try to explain that uh, welfare is really connected to production, is really connected to the health. And so this builds trust in our profession to be more present. And something that uh, uh, we don't like is uh, uh, go too much on TV, on newspaper. Yeah. We are more working in the dark, behind, into the farm. No one go with a camera in, into a farm. So it's something that is not really open to the people. And so sometimes uh, they cannot understand yeah. how much is important the vet's profession. So how can we gain some visibility on, <clears throat> on, on this vet profession, especially in swine? I know that you are involved in many associations in, in Europe, and we were discussing uh, before with you that uh, there are sometimes a lack of connection between all of these associations. How can we improve this visibility for the public opinion? The, um, the association, the species association are uh, very important from my point of view. And the, the problem is to connect in people. It's not very easy to, to reach all the people. Uh, in, before COVID, we, uh, it was easier to meet each other, to organize congresses and when we started with COVID to organize webinar, it's something very useful from my point of view. You have a couple of hours, you can uh, uh, learn something, but if we, we are missing the connection. Now we are very close to each other and we are not scared for the COVID, uh, but we need to, to find again the personal relationship mm -hmm. also in this, because together we can help our sector to go on. And if I'm alone or you are alone or we are only a few people and we work separate. This cannot help us to go on. And we can see that several associations are closing because no people is really interested. Yeah. Um, in, in the association, you need to find the time to uh, invest in the association and it's not very easy because you are not having any money from 
uh, this work uh, and maybe you have a family, you have your practice, you have you try to find some free time for yourself and it is not very easy. So few people are interested in the association. We are more concentrated on our own life and maybe COVID push a little bit more this to, to be concentrated on our life. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I think uh, we need to, to, to be more involved also in this association because the profession need to be uh, present, need to be uh, represented. represented. And so yeah. I'm also use this conversation with you to, to push all the people that can ask, uh, listen to us and, uh, or you know to, to push them to, to, to contact also EAPHM and so on to uh, devolve sometimes because together we can build something important for the profession and when there are only few people uh, you have few time and few energy. So yes. it's very important that all the practitioner can be involved. Sometimes I listen, oh, they are not doing anything, they are doing few things. This is quite impolite um, uh, because we are doing yeah. our best and yeah. maybe uh, it's not enough, I know, but we are always yeah. doing our best. And it's also important to have the protection for a future, that, uh, the, to protect this veterinary profession that we keep going in the, in the future, that we survive in, in, the, in the future. Sure, yeah. also for, for the next generation, we need to, to find the right way because the, the times are changing and also the profession is changing. And we need to find a way to, to have a, um, a profession for the future that can be free. Uh, we, we can see that there are a lot of uh, corporate that are coming in our profession. And when you are uh, a practitioner and you are free, think uh, is very helpful because you are owner of your practice and this is easier. When you are part of a corporate, there is someone that uh, need to do a business on that. And maybe sometimes you are not so free to work uh, in the right way. So I, I, I think that concentration of the practices can be useful to manage better the work, uh, but we need to go on to, 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 to think free and to, to do our best and with ethics for the professions. How do you see the, the vet profession, the future of the vet profession here in, in Europe? Well, from my point of view, there is a, a high request of vets and uh, especially in pets because there are a lot of pets uh, uh, in our uh, houses. So more and more pets are present. And so there is a high request of vets in small animals and especially uh, specialized vets as cardiology mm -hmm. or uh, dermatology and so on. So uh, I think for the future, there will be a very high request of uh, vets, but um, we have some problem in large animals because um, uh, we need a lot of vets uh, to go into the farms, uh, but uh, there is no so many people that are interested in, uh, uh, in this sector. Uh, maybe because the, the, the young guys come from the cities because in the, the, the university are more, more concentrated on uh, the pets, that is the, the business that is growing. Uh, Maybe because uh, it's, it's an hard work to go in, uh, in the farm, uh, it smell and, and so on. So uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, uh, it, it's not very easy to work with uh, large animals, but uh, I think we need to help people to know better this, uh, this word because for example, there is a high request on, uh, on welfare of the animals and that that can uh, drive this uh, changing and drive uh, this enforcement of the welfare, because if they are involved into the farm, they can help farmers to understand that it's very important, very connected to the production. So I think for the future of the profession, there is uh, uh, a lot a lot to do. And uh, I think that, uh, that the, the guys can very involved in this, in this profession. It's very important also they can uh, free uh, the free thinking, so we are also aggregating uh, the profession with the corporates that are buying clinics and uh, it's important that they can free think and do their job uh, free of doing the best for the animals because uh, as vet we are the advocate of the animals, they, they cannot speak and, but uh, we have to help them to stay better, to live better because if can have better life for the animals have also better life for us. 
But Ruben, I'd like also to ask you, what do you see for the profession? Because I'm a pr private practitioner and you, live, you, you work for the company and like how can you see the future and also how the company can help us to, to go further with, with the profession? Yeah, this is a, a good question. Uh, if I focus now only on the vet profession uh, around pigs, um, I have the feeling and I have discussed already with uh, many people uh, around Europe, it looks like uh, we have a low number of uh, vet students that will like to do, uh, to, to like to work with, with pigs in, uh, nowadays. With the exception maybe from a couple of countries, like for example in Spain we have many vets, but in other countries, uh, I remember I was in, in Belgium uh, working at Ghent University as assistant and we were having three, four, five, six, maximum eight students a year during the five years that I was there for a country with 10 million of pigs. This is very few, only five students on average per year graduated on, on pig medicine. I think this is very few for a, a such production. If I look into UK, the, the amount of students that they are graduated in the last years is also quite low. Uh, and mainly this is a, a, a problem you mentioned before that could be related with them uh, with the fact that uh, uh, it's not maybe the best appealing work or most of the students they choose for the small animals because it's more the more romantic uh, way to do yeah. practice uh, depending on the countries they choose also for uh, dairy uh, cattle uh, because it's a little bit more romantic that yeah. <laughs> to see the picture of the, of the pig maybe because they smell or I don't know but if I look now in with perspective I think that this uh, a very kind job. Uh, it's true that you need to take a shower. This is one of the less problems. But you work. You don't have shifts, or you don't have. Uh, you don't need to work during night. Uh, in very rare occasions, you go to the slaughterhouse. You work with data. You learn. Uh, you keep learning every day. So it's a quite a dynamic uh, work. You are still in the field. You can uh, do other uh, jobs at the office. So it's quite flexible. A work that can give you a lot of time to be with your family also. So. That, um, I think that we need to, to be focused in that direction. Uh, try to promote in some way that, and of course, help the, the students to, to choose or to be specialized. For example, uh, I'm now answering a little bit your question, this was the perspective that I have. Now answering your question is what can we do as a company, as MSD, uh, to promote that the vet students stay doing uh, pigs. So, for example, what we have in, in MSD is the Swine University for an MSD, uh, a kind of a specialization program for the, just, uh, for the recently graduated vets in different countries. They are invited and they can follow a kind of master or a legend uh, course during two, three years to get specialized in different topics. Uh, we invite uh, speakers, professors from different universities and they follow a training. Uh, years ago was face-to-face -face training. Now with the COVID, it was a little bit virtual with some lessons in, in presence. So this is something that we can we can do and we are already uh, doing. Uh, in the same way, in parallel, I think that many countries in Europe uh, or many MSD uh, countries in, in Europe, they have also a kind of vet academy uh, forming the, or uh, providing a good education to, to, do, uh, to those vets uh, in a different country level. So this is something that, uh, that a company can keep doing just to promote uh, or to motivate those students to, to, to keep going in, in pigs. I believe that the young vets nowadays, they will be the future of the uh, vet professor in a few years. So it's worth it to invest on them and to start working in the specialization of those, of those vets that will be uh, taking care of us in, the, in a few years. Something that we thought in the EAPHM was to open our practice, to, uh, have, to give the possibility to uh, the, the, the students or young graduated people to uh, reach the profession and to see uh, what he's doing, how is the job in Italy, how is the job uh, in France or mm. in the Netherlands and so on. But it's not very easy to reach them because um, in, we, we don't have the connection with, with, uh, with them. So it's not very easy to, to catch them and to tell, okay, I'm, I'm open to, to, to receive you in my daily work and you can stay for one week, yeah. for one month, uh, just coming with me and see, and see the work. Therese, the uh, student association that is very active but is not very con well concentrated on 
the swine sector is more concentrated on the future of uh, of the, the young graduate. Yeah, that's it. And and when I think about the young graduates, um, what will be your advice to for a young graduate, saying, okay, uh, you have to work in pigs, you will get specialized in a few years. What skills do we need from a young vet? Is something that they need to learn a lot about statistics or epidemiology or virology, pathology? What will be the skills needed in the future? Well, Ruben, is not very easy to answer to this, but um, uh, I know that at the university, we study a lot of uh, technical uh, things. So we study a lot of pathology, we study a lot of regarding health, regarding nutrition. So I think we not need more and more on that, but there are some skills that uh, no, nobody teach us. It is like communication. We are not teaching. And we were speaking before about to, that communication. Yeah. To, to speak to the farmer and or to speak with a client of the pets, you are you need different communication because um, the, the the small cat or the small dog is like like a child for, for the, the woman or the, the men yeah. that come into the clinic. And uh, the pigs and the dairy cow, uh, it's a little bit different because it's something related to the income, but they have also feeling because they, that is my sow, that is my uh, cow. So they have a relationship with the animals, but the relationship with um, the, the business. So it's something a little bit different, and we are not trained to do that. So that is really important, how to communicate and how to uh, build a good relationship, relationship with your client because with that is the, the key point. And the and final goal will be this win to win that we that we were speaking before. So sure. you need to be uh, to to have a good return of investment for both companies if you want them to survive. So I guess economy will be also a, a skill that needs to be improved for the young vets. And also with economy is very important because uh, uh, why uh, the old. Uh, Vets are, are selling their clinics uh, to corporate. It's because they are quite tired. It's uh, at the end of the profession, and it is. Uh, uh, we can understand that, but now we can see that we have young vets that are selling their clinics. So they are 40 years old, and they are selling. Why you are selling? And the answer is, I'm very tired. I don't have time to manage the economy. I'm not uh, having. I'm not doing money because I'm losing. Uh, I'm losing money uh, because I cannot manage in the right way the economical part. I study to do to be a cardiology or uh, uh, specialize yeah. that. I'm, I didn't study to manage a clinic. I have to pay people. Totally and sometimes agree. when I finish to pay people, I don't have money for me. On, and we, we were more, uh, we could see more than uh, some practice with an owner and some vets that work for uh, him or her. Uh, now the practice is something for, for all the people that are involved, uh, also if they are owner or uh, workers. And the feeling is that I have a vet is I have studied to be a vet. I want to treat animals, to, to, to be engaged with animals, not with the numbers of the clinic. So this is very stressful for a vet. Maybe we need to learn something more, how to organize our practice, how to be, how to have more time for our families. Because uh, uh, we, we, we need also to live and all the young vets want time to, to, to work, work hard, but also time to, to have a little bit of fun, time for the family. And in the past, the, the old uh, uh, the vets were, were called the heroes of the professions mm -hmm. because we started at 2 o'clock in the night for uh, uh, the birth of the, of, the, of the veal or something like this, and they finish it. 10 uh, uh, in the evening, so they, they work for 16, 18 hours going yeah. all around with the car or with the, uh, the motorbike or something like this. Uh, today is unacceptable. So we need to learn how to organize better our practice and uh, how to have a good income and how to work together, having fun and having a high quality of the work. If you can have time to think, if you have time to rest, you can That's go. It. You can work in a in a very good way. But sometimes this is not possible. And also in my life is there are morning that it's uh, half past four, yeah. and the evening is a midnight. It's a long, so long evening. Yeah. Sometimes it's very difficult to work in uh, so. as as a vet uh, as a swine practitioner. Yeah. Okay. But 
but I like this yeah. work and I'm going on. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think it's time to close here this uh, talk. Uh, it was a really pleasure. I would like to finish with the last question. We were discussing about the present of the veterinary medicine, uh, of the veterinary profession, about the future. And now I have a question for you about the past. Imagine that we go back now 20 years. Will you choose again to become a veterinarian? I'm sure about that because I, I love my, my work. And uh, you can see that uh, I'm doing a lot of effort for, for uh, also for the others, for the profession in different association. And this is because I, I love this work and I, I want that more people can live uh, the work uh, uh, in, in a different way. Sometimes it's something that you have on your back is pushing you and you, you cannot feel uh, comfortable in this work. I feel very comfortable. I love it and I have... Uh, I like also to, to, to have this relationship with farmers, with other colleagues, and so I think it's a wonderful job, and maybe it's also uh, my, my first hobby. So <laughs> it's a job, it's a hobby, and it, it, it's all my life. So yeah. I, I, I think that uh, uh, if a young uh, uh, guy wants to go in this profession, uh, need to, 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 to push a lot of, to, to put a lot of effort in, in this, but uh, I think it's a very good job. So I, I like Perfect. it very much because I, I got up in the morning and I'm happy of, yeah. of my job and I, of my life. I agree with you. I know very few vets that they will not like to become vets again if we go into the past. So thank you very much for, for this nice uh, talk, Ivan Batista. And yeah. Thanks a lot See to you, you for time. the invitation. It was a very big pleasure to stay here with you. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you, uh, everyone, for watching us today. Uh, it was a very nice uh, session. I hope to see you all, all of us, all of you, again in the next coaching session. And now it's time to go to enjoy Valencia and to eat uh, a paella. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.